Boom, 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 Whenever we talk of the temptation success in music, nine out of ten, the names David Ruffin, Eddie Kendricks, are always the top names mentioned, probably because they played lead. The name Melvin Franklin always comes later, and his role is often overlooked every time we talk of the talented voices that helped shape the legacy of Motown music as a whole. Even back in his town, Montgomery, Alabama, his birthplace, his name is rarely mentioned as a historic marker, with most of the emphasis pointing to activism and those that were vocal in the civil right era heavily featuring in this list. The likes of Nat King Cole, Rosa Parks, Ralph Abernathy, just to name a few. But this man was more than what we're told about him. He was special, special in very many ways. To begin with, his voice was magical. It was gentle, yet powerful enough to make your chest rumble. He is undoubtedly one of the best bass singers this world has ever seen. Be it in a group, a choir, or even in a multitude, his unique, deep voice would always be a standout. Many veteran vocalists point out how well he complemented Eddie's falsetto voice in the group. Over to his personality and character, you could never hate this gentleman. His likeable personality always ensured it was never a dull moment whenever he was around. He never took anything at heart. A man whose size of his heart matched his depth of pitch. It is to no surprise that he was always known to be the heart of the Temptations. He was the glue in the classic Five era, and every member loved and respected him. His humility and loyalty, too, is something that is not talked about more often. Humility in the sense that he never overstepped his role in the group. He never let his selfish interests get into his way. And even when the others were being mentioned more, he faithfully followed what the top leadership felt was good for the direction of the group. Loyalty in the sense that he never betrayed his childhood friend Otis Williams and always backed him up when there were wrangles in the group. The two are the only members who never left the temptation since its inception. We could go on and on and trust me, we would never run out of praises to this gentleman in every aspect. But all these points back to how he was brought up and how he overcame numerous barriers to achieve the legendary status and respect in the music industry. This is Melvin Blue Franklin's story. Melvin was born David Melvin English on October 12, 1942 in Montgomery, Alabama to Rose English, better known as Mama Rose, a teenage mother who was 17 at the time. His biological father was the preacher of the English family's church in Mobile, who, according to his mother, impregnated her through non-consensual relations. Following Melvin's birth and determined to create a better life, Mama Rose would marry Willard Franklin shortly after and relocate to Detroit. However, Melvin's grandmother and aunt insisted on a young Melvin remaining behind to be under their care. Melvin would grow up under his grandmother's care while once in a while visiting his mother in the holidays. His strict and religious background played a huge role in his interest in music from a very early age, as early as age three. Fast forward, when he hit 10, he permanently moved to Detroit to be with his mother and stepfather, who was a church minister. It is also this time he adopted his surname, Franklin, from his stepfather. He joined a Detroit elementary school, where it is said his gift was recognized after he played Scrooge in a Christmas play, and impressed receiving a standing ovation. He then moved to McMichael Junior High, then later proceeded to Northwestern High School. By the time he was 15, he was already performing using his stage name, Melvin Franklin, working with a number of groups and upcoming artists like him, the likes of Richard Street, Lamont Dozier and David Ruffin. He was fortunate enough to work with these in the Voice Masters group under Anna Records, a label co-founded by Berry Gordy's sister, Anna Gordy, featuring in the song Hope and Pray just as a voice and not a member as he was still in school. Over to the other side, in 1958, a fellow schoolmate of his at Northwestern High School by the name of Otis Williams also had great passion in music and had formed his own group, Otis Williams and the Siberians, which consisted of himself, Elbridge Al Bryant, James Crawford, Arthur Walton and Bernard Plain, 
were negotiating a contract with record producer Johnny May Matthews to record singles. While in the process, it so happened that Arthur Walton, the group's bass singer, decided to depart the group to finish high school. The void left had to be filled. Coincidentally, when Otis was strolling one afternoon, he saw Melvin and remembered hearing his deep voice when he featured with the voice masters. While approaching him, a scared and innocent Melvin Franklin crossed over to the other side of the road to avoid confrontation with Otis, who, according to him, looked like a gang member with his style of dressing and his long hair. With Otis fast approaching, Melvin took to his heels and was almost letting out a scream when Otis caught up with him and explained himself, offering him a role as the bass singer of his group. Melvin, who didn't know Otis and still scared, not knowing what to do, told him to go ask his mother, Mama Rose. As funny as it looks, we really can't blame Melvin for behaving this way, as he was quite innocent, judging by Detroit standards. Otis wasted no time. He composed himself and went over to meet Melvin's mother and explained everything to her. Mama Rose gave Melvin the go-ahead, but begged Otis to take care of his son. This marked the beginning of a special friendship between Otis and Melvin, a friendship that would last a lifetime. Shortly after, Vernar Plain, the group's lead singer, also departed the group, with Franklin bringing in his close friend Richard Street on board to replace Vernar. With the group now consisting of Williams, Franklin, Street, Elbridge L. Bryant and James P. Wee Crawford, would rename to Otis Williams and the Distance recording under Matthews Northern Records, releasing singles such as Come On, 1959, and All Right, 1960. Around this time, Franklin briefly attended Wayne State University. A dispute over the group's royalties with Matthews led to the termination of their contract with Northern Records. By 1960, the distance had been reduced to a trio after Street, and Crawford left the group. After losing their name, the distance, the remaining members joined forces with Paul Williams and Eddie Kendricks to create a new group, which they initially called the Elgins. In March 1961, this newly formed group signed a deal with Motown Records and changed their name to The Temptations. During his time with The Temptations, Franklin earned the nickname Blue from his fellow bandmates due to his passion for the Italian song Nel Blu, Dipinto di Blu. He occasionally took on lead roles in songs like I Truly, Truly Believe from The Temptations, Wish It Would Rain in 1968, Silent Night, from Give Love at Christmas in 1980, The Prophet, from A Song for You in 1975, and his signature live performance piece, Old Man River. Franklin was often called upon for ad-libs, harmonies, and, during the psychedelic soul era, significant sections of the main verses. A memorable instance was his delivery of the line, and the band played on in The Temptations' 1970 hit single ball of confusion, That's What the World Is Today. Renowned for his deep, distinctive bass vocals, Franklin's singing became one of the group's defining features. Blue was always known to be the heart of The Temptations, a gentle giant who was likeable, both by the band members and the fans. His voice and Eddie's complemented each other so well and had wonderful chemistry with Paul doing choreography. Of the original Temptations members, Franklin and Otis Williams were the only ones who stayed with the group throughout their entire career. The two had developed a deeper friendship, one that not only had its eyes on the prize in music, but also was tied with a similar past. You see, even though Otis was a year older than Melvin, they had undergone the same upbringing. They were both raised by their grandmothers as toddlers. They both moved to Detroit, Michigan once they hit ten years where their mothers had moved to and were under the care of their stepfathers. Melvin, as many know him, was the do-or-die type. He never betrayed his friend. He never let pride cloud his judgment. Even when the likes of Eddie Kendricks and David Ruffin decided to challenge the authority of the group, he was the only one who remained loyal to Otis. 
In an exclusive interview with American bandstand host, the legendary Dick Clark in 1980, this is what he had to say. He is the leader, founder, and backbone of the temptation. No, 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 no. Away from that, Melvin had his share of troubles too. In the autumn of 1978, Franklin intervened in a carjacking outside a West Hollywood hair salon and was shot in the hand and leg. The assailant recognized him as a member of the Temptations and fled in his car. This incident prevented Franklin from participating in the group's planned tour of Poland, which was then still a part of the Iron Curtain. During his recovery, Otis Williams assumed Franklin's bass parts. Besides his work with The Temptations, Franklin also lent his voice to animated series, such as providing the voice for the character wheels in the 1984 series Pole Position. In 1989, Franklin was honored with induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a member of The Temptations. Later in September 1994, The Temptations received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. His health problems, however, were slowly catching up with him. When he was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis back in 1968, he would combat the symptoms with cortisone to enable him continue performing. The frequent use of cortisone messed up with his immune system, making him prone to other diseases and infections. He developed diabetes in the early 1980s and later diagnosed with necrotizing fasciitis, a severe bacterial infection in the summer of 1994 after being rushed to the hospital. There, the surgeons had to operate on Franklin's arm to save his life, but due to his compromised immune system, he remained at risk for remission. In fact, to treat his illnesses, it is said he had to take oxygen tanks with him while on tour with the group. In January 1995, while recording what would be his last track with the group, Life is But a Dream, for the album, For Lovers Only. Ali Ollie Woodson and Otis Williams noticed bleeding from Franklin's ankle on his sock. He was taken home to recover, but on February 17th, he fell into a coma after a series of seizures and never recovered. On the 23rd of February 1995, Franklin sadly died from heart failure at the Cedars Sinai Medical Center at the age of 52. His funeral was widely attended, with Smokey Robinson commemorating Franklin with the song Really Gonna Miss You, a moment recreated for the Temptations miniseries. He was interred at the Forest Lawn Memorial Park in the Hollywood Hills neighborhood of Los Angeles. Melvin Franklin was married twice to Tony and Kimberly, who had five children. Fast forward in February 2013, he would be posthumously awarded a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award as a member of The Temptations and inducted into the Rhythm and Blues Music Hall of Fame as a member of The Temptations in August the same year. All these just sums up what and who he was. We will always remember him as a talented champion, whose voice was a force of nature, a rich and velvety resonance that could make the heavens weep and hearts skip a beat. Have you, is it true you've known this man since you were 14? Yes, indeed. I'm proud to say that Otis Williams is my 23-year friend. His loyalty and value for friendship, too, will never go unnoticed. It shows what he truly stood for deep inside. He is gone, but will never be forgotten.